From 12th of August 2016, we'll have to consider how the Insurance Act affects insurance policy claims. This video provides an overview of how the Act deals with issues of non-disclosure and misrepresentation. Before you watch this video, you should download a copy of our distinctive booklet on the Act, so you can refer to it while watching the video. You'll find a link to the booklet on the page where you found this tutorial. You should also watch the first video in this series that gives an introduction to the Act and explains how the booklet works. Let's get started. Page 3 of the guide presents an overview of how I recommend you consider issues of non-disclosure and misrepresentation under the Act. I'm going to lead you through this chart explaining each step that needs to be considered when you have a claim and where you think the Act might apply. The Act only applies to non-disclosure and misrepresentation in relation to non-consumer policies. That is why the initial group of questions are really a reminder to check whether you are dealing with a consumer claim. The first question, is the insured a natural person? is asking whether the insured is a company or other form of business entity but not a living and breathing individual. If the insured is not a real person, then follow the no arrow to the next group of questions. If you answer yes, then move across and ask yourself whether the policy is wholly or mainly unrelated to the insured's trade, business or profession. If the policy is unrelated to their business, then you are dealing with a consumer claim. Non-disclosure misrepresentation in relation to consumer claims is governed by an earlier piece of legislation. The Consumer Insurance Disclosure and Representations Act 2012, otherwise known as CIDA. As a reminder, blue boxes indicate that more detailed consideration is needed and show you which page to turn to in the guide to do that. In this case, turn to page 15 of the guide if you need to apply CIDA. I will cover CIDA in a separate video. If the policy is not unrelated to the insured's business, then you are not dealing with a consumer policy. In that case, follow the no arrow and move down the page. You now have to ask a key question. When did the policy incept or renew, or was there a relevant variation? For the Act to apply, it must be on or after the 12th of August 2016. If you answer no to this, then you should deal with the claim applying the law as it was before the Act came into force. But if you answer yes to that question, so the policy did incept or renew, or was varied on or after the 12th of August 2016, then move down the page following the yes arrow. This brings us to an important group of questions. A key provision of the Act allows insurers to contract out of its provisions. You should therefore check whether you are looking at a policy that states that the Act does not apply. If you have a policy with such a term, then you need to follow the yes arrow right, where you will see there is a blue box. As with earlier, you will need to turn to page 23 of the guide, which will help you assess whether the policy has successfully contracted out of the Act. If you do that, then once you have followed the chart on page 23, you will have your yes or no answer as to whether the insurer has successfully contracted out of the Act. If they have, then follow the yes arrow and you'll see that you now need to consider the claim in relation to the policy's terms. However, if the insurer has not contracted out of the Act in relation to non-disclosure and misrepresentation, successfully or all, then follow the no arrow down to the next question. This question is really a reminder for those handlers dealing with fraud claims. Where there is a fraud but also suspicion of non-disclosure or misrepresentation, handlers can choose how best to approach the claim. The question asking if the claim is fraudulent is obviously a complex one and is way beyond the scope of this chart. But if you've established that there is a fraud, or you think you might, then follow the yes arrow to the right. You'll see there is another date check here. That is simply because, where the fraud is in relation to a variation, that must be of a policy that was incepted or renewed on or after the 12th of August 2016. If you have a case of fraud in your hands, then you will see by the blue box that you should turn to page 27 to see how the Act has codified the remedies available to insurers. But if fraud is not involved, or there is a fraud and you want to see how an alternative approach might work, then follow the no arrow down. Now we've got to a key bit of the Act relating to non-disclosure and misrepresentation. One of the central changes brought about by the legislation is the new duty on the insured, the duty to make a fair presentation of the risk. This is a complex topic as the Act consolidates and reorganises the law in relation to non-disclosure and misrep. I will deal with the detail of this in a separate video, but you can see that you need to turn to page 5 to work through the requirements of the new duty. For now, let us assume that you've assessed whether the risk was presented fairly. If the answer to the question in the blue box was yes, so there was a fair presentation, then you'll see that by following the yes arrow on the left, there is no remedy. The insurer does not breach their duty. You should go and deal with other policy issues that otherwise adjust the claim in accordance with the policy's terms. However, 
If insured did not present the risk fairly, then fold the no arrow down. You then have to establish whether the breach caused the policy to be contracted on different terms. If underwriters tell you that the breach of the duty of fair presentation made no difference to their underwriting, then you head left along the no arrow, again you have no remedy. However, if underwriters would have contracted differently, with different terms, increased premium, or they would have passed on the opportunity to write at all, then you unfold the yes arrow. At this point you would turn to page 13 to see how the remedies provided by the Act apply. That is worthy of a video of its own, so I won't cover it here. To summarise however, insurers are given a wider range of remedies than what was available under the old law. A material non-disclosure under the old law only entitled an insurer to avoid the policy. That meant the policy was treated like it never existed. Claims could therefore be denied, although premium had to be returned. That was a bit one-sided and could be quite brutal. It was one of the reasons why the Law Commission recommended a change. The Act provides different remedies depending on the circumstances. Avoidance can still be the remedy. The premium is not always returned depending on the insured's behaviour. Insurer may only be entitled to discount the claim in proportion to the additional premium that they would have charged. That means the remedy is more proportionate and fair. That also might mean that insurers are more willing to apply that sort of remedy rather than avoiding the whole policy as they would have been required to do under the old law. Look for the video on remedies if you want to learn more about this. So there you have it. The duty of fair presentation and the new remedies are two of the major changes brought about by the Act. There's only been an overview of the changes to non-disclosure and misrepresentation. You can watch other videos in the series to learn more about the detail of the Act. I'm Michael Hogg, a partner in Kennedy's London office. The Insurance Act 2015. A distinctive approach.